Hello everyone and welcome to a long overdue video for Jurassic World Evolution 2 where we're going to be continuing our DLC speculation. With payout DLC content confirmed for this year, both for this game and for Planet Zoo as well, I think we can begin our speculations as to what these DLCs could potentially look like. Now last year we only got three DLCs as the 30th anniversary took up the regular DLC slots that we would have been expecting another DLC in the summer of 2023. But let's talk about two DLCs that I think are quite likely for 2024, given the Cretaceous Predator pack and the room it leaves for potential DLCs. So without further ado, let's begin. Kicking it off, we have the Cretaceous Prey pack, a herbivore-themed DLC centered around species of the Cretaceous period. And let's begin. The most obvious dinosaur from this period is Microceratus. Microceratus is a small ceratopsian dinosaur from the Cretaceous period of Mongolia and China. With a diminutive size, it is one of the smaller dinosaurs that could be found in Jurassic World. You can find Microceratus at the Cretaceous cruise at Isla Nublar's Jurassic World. It is also found in the Maltese black market during 2022's Jurassic World Dominion. Now, Microceratus would be one of the smallest dinosaurs in the game. And the, as it is a Dominion dinosaur, it would have movie accurate skins. There were actually three skins for the Microceratus that were briefly seen in the movie that you can see here Microceratus 22 A, B, and C. Our next dinosaur is Shantungosaurus. Shantungosaurus is a colossal saurolophine hadrosaur from the late Cretaceous of China. Found at the Xingjuan formation, this this species would have coexisted with notable species such as Sinoceratops and Juchang Tyrannus. It is perhaps the largest of the hadrosaurs with a scale that surpasses other large species like North America's Edmontosaurus and Magnapolia. Argentinosaurus is a large titanosaurian sauropod from the Lake Cretaceous of Argentina from the Huancul Formation. Contrary to popular belief, Argentinosaurus did not coexist with the Carnosaurian Giganotosaurus. Instead, it was preyed upon by its cousin, the Maposaurus. In previous years, Argentinosaurus was regarded as the largest dinosaur of all time, until recent discoveries of some larger titanosaurs such as Patagotitan. Its reputation, however, still remains legendary. Our final species of the pack, Diabloceratops. Diabloceratops is a species of Centrosaurian ceratopsian, similar to species like Ineosaurus and Storacosaurus. It was originally discovered in Utah by James Kirkland, the same paleontologist that discovered Utah Raptor. This species lived during the Campanian stage of the Lake Cretaceous alongside the Lambiosaur Adolophus and the Tyrannosaur Lithranax. Its large brown horns give it its name, which translates to devil horned face. Moving on to the free update features that could be part of this update. We have giving the hadrosaurs the ability to both fight one another and against predators would be a great feature for giving the particularly large species a fighting chance as they would have had in life. Species like Shantungosaurus and Edmontosaurus could fight against larger predators like Tarbosaurus and Tyrannosaurus, while medium-sized hadrosaurs like Parasaurolophus, Allorotine and Carithosaurus fight off medium carnivores like Carnotaurus, Allosaurus, and Baryonyx. Sauropods too could get similar treatment, allowing these behemoths of their time to be a harder prey item to tackle, as they would have been difficult for one, of, one or even more large predators to bring down. Species like Argentinosaurus, Dreadnoughtus, Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, Camarosaurus, Alamosaurus, Brachiosaurus, and Mementosaurus would be able to use their tails, necks, forelimbs, and immense weight to fend off large to medium predators such as Allosaurus, Giganotosaurus, Carcharodonosaurus, and similar species. Having them to fight one another would also be a, a good addition as what we saw in Prehistoric Planet with these two Dreadnoughtus would be a massive spectacle to bring, bring into the game. This update would also introduce Cretaceous Cruise as a new attraction, and it is by far the most requested attraction from the Jurassic World movie, 
And personally, I would love to be able to use a Cretaceous cruise for our, for our guests in our parks. I found this art online of what the station could potentially look like. And yeah, I like this look and I think it worked really well with Jurassic World Evolution 2's aesthetics. A final feature to this update should be the addition of some new variants, including the Nasutoceratops male, complete with a 2022 skin, perhaps even adding the 2022 skin for the base Nasutoceratops as well. Three more variants that could be added into this update could be the 1993 Triceratops, the 2022 Parasaurolophus, and the Parasaurolophus Lux, as well as potentially the Prologue Tyrannosaurus Rex. Another bonus addition could be the Little Edie's Tyrannosaurus Rex skin from Camp Cretaceous and the Prologue Giganotosaurus skin. Our next pack is the Prehistoric Flying Species Pack, a more air-based sequel to the Prehistoric Marine Species Pack, consisting of animals that are known for their flying capabilities and other factors as well. Our first species would be Hatsugotrix. Hatsugotrix is the largest of the known pterosaurs and was the apex predator of Hatsugar in Eastern Europe during the Maastrichtian stage of the late Cretaceous. Its beak was about 2.5 meters to 8 feet in length. Its wingspan was between 10 to 12 meters or 33 to 39 feet. It was about as tall as a giraffe and hunted dinosaurs on the ground with legs specifically adapted for ground movement, whether it be walking or even running. Our next species is Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx is one of the oldest and most important fossils that highlighted the presence of feathers on dinosaurs. It was discovered in the Solnhofen Formation of Germany, which was also the home to the dinosaur Compsognathus during the late, late Jurassic. It was about the size of a pigeon and was one of the only dinosaurs capable of powered flight, using this capability to hunt down insects in the skies of the forest. Pterodostro is an ibis-sized pterosaur from early Cretaceous South America. Its bizarre build that is distinguished by bristle-like teeth functions very similar to how baleen whales and flamingos feed, through sieving small organisms like crustaceans, plankton, and algae through the bristles and filtering out the water. Rampharynchus is a seagull-sized coastal pterosaur from the archipelago of islands in the late Jurassic that would one day become the British Isles. Its skull lacked the crest that adorns the heads of many pterosaurs. Its beak contains small needle-like teeth that interlock, making them a perfect fish trap. Onto the free update features for this DLC. We have perhaps the most important one, allowing pterosaurs to have terrestrial movement, and perhaps even hunting small dinosaurs while walking and even running. When it comes to as dark and pterosaurs, those being Quetzalcoatlus and Hatsugotrix, this would be a very handy feature to make them a more realistic animal to house in aviaries if they would have the option to just stay on the ground and do as they like. And perhaps even giving them conflict animations between dinosaurs, much larger than their prey items, would also be cool. Pterodostro has a unique feeding method through filter feeding, so a kind of plankton or brine pool feeder would be a good way to feed them, similar to how fl flamingos would feed in a zoo. Some other items would be the Jurassic World monorail gate as a placeable item to the monorail tracks, and perhaps even a ground level monorail station, just like in Jurassic World. And a, perhaps a placeable Jurassic World aviary could work too, with cliffs and perch points for many pterosaurs, complete with a waterfall and a pool for, of water for feeders. This aviary would probably be equivalent to the size of a 12 to 16 piece aviary that's tall with a dome top. This aviary would probably be more appropriate for those darkies to fly around in without being cramped. And personally, I would love to see this Avery added to Jurassic World Evolution 2, as I think it was so beautiful in the movie, even though we only saw it for a brief second. But um, yeah, I would love to see it added to Jurassic World Evolution 2 and to be able to utilize it in perhaps a Jurassic World recreation.
And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the prehistoric flying species pack and the Cretaceous prey pack. Let me know what you think of these ideas and what other ideas I should cover in the next video for Jurassic World Evolution 2. Leave those in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, do leave a like and subscribe as we continue to head closer to 1,000 subs. And as for now, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.